California condors are an intriguing bird that range spans across the California coastal mountains and central and southern California. They also inhabit northern Arizona and southern Utah across the Grand Canyon and Zion Parks. California condors are the largest North American bird, with a wingspan of 8.2 to 9.8 feet. They have the second largest wingspan of any condor, being beaten by the Andean condor. California condors weigh 18 to 31 pounds, a mass surpassed by very few bird species. The adult condors are primarily black, except for large white swaths on their underwings. They have a bald pinkish yellow head framed by a ruff of black feathers and silvery legs and feet. Juvenile condors have a darker and slimmer head than adults, and their white wing patches are less noticeable. Condors are often confused with small planes. If you are unable to define this very much alive bird from a metal flying machine, then the rest of this advice in this section will be useless because you need to get glasses. The most common bird mistaken for condors is the turkey vultures. If the bird is close enough to see the underwing, then the identification is relatively easy. The turkey vulture has silvery primaries or outer wing feathers, while the condor has triangular white patches under the wings. If the bird is too far away to tell via the color of the wings, then it is helpful to tell them apart via their gliding methods. Turkey vultures hold their wings in a V shape and are generally less stable flyers than condors. Condors feast upon carrion, and though their size is intimidating, they do not attack or try to prey on humans, or any other animal. Their feet are too weak to grasp anything other than a branch, so no, they cannot carry away small children and dogs. Condors often feed at carcasses they find alongside turkey vultures and golden eagles. Condors keep cool by defecating on their legs. As the foul concoction evaporates, it cools the blood vessels in their legs. This is called urohydrosis, and this interesting adaptation is shared with many other species, including storks and other New World vultures, a term we'll get to later on in the video. Condors often live in groups, and these groups have a social hierarchy. The higher up individuals are able to feed from carcasses before the others. The hierarchy is determined by play fighting, grunt-like vocalizations, and age. Condors live up to 60 years and reach maturity at 6 years. They lay a single large white egg every other year. Eggs take 2 months to incubate and chicks take around 6 months to raise. When raising chicks, the adults are very strict. For example, when a chick is overenthusiastic about mealtime, the adult sometimes puts its foot on the youngster's neck as a reprimand. California condors are a species classified in the family of New World vultures. This family includes five living vultures and two living condors. The black vulture, the greater and lesser yellow-headed vulture, the king vulture, the turkey vulture, the Andean condor, and our pal, the California condor. In the late Pleistocene, California condors ranged all across North America. They started to decline sharply when European settlers arrived as they were shot and pushed out of their habitats. California condors are critically endangered due to many threats. Because of their huge wingspan, they often collide with power lines, and like many other carnivorous bird species, their population was affected by DDT, which made their age shells fragile. In 1987, condors were down to 27 wild individuals, which were all captured and put in a captive breeding program. The birds were housed across two captive breeding facilities, the San Diego Wild Animal Park and Los Angeles Zoo. Though many at the time were critical of captive breeding, the attempt was successful, and by 1999,
the population increased to 161 birds. In 2003, the first nestling hatched in the wild in over a century. Right now, the population sits a little under 500 birds in the wild. The biggest threat currently for the California condors is lead poisoning. Carrion often comes in form of an animal shot by hunters, and the condors can accidentally ingest fragments of the bullets. Because of their extremely strong stomach acid, they are more susceptible to lead poisoning than other carrion eaters. Even though lead bullets were banned within the range of condors in 2008, they are still the cause for two-thirds of the deaths of these magnificent birds. A condor safe alternative to lead bullets are copper bullets, which do not fragment as much when they hit a target and are not as toxic to wildlife. Micro trash is also a culprit for the death of many condors, especially chicks. Between 2001 and 2005, only one chick fledged out of 16 nests in the wild because it was being fed man-made objects by its unknowing parents. Because of this, biologists decided to check on the eggs in chicks regularly. If a chick is found with health issues, it is treated swiftly. This process increased the survival rate of chicks dramatically. From 2007 to 2016, 33 of 59 chicks survived the nesting period in the wild. Each condor has a tag and transmitter attached to its wing, as all individuals are heavily monitored to minimize losses to the population. The tags are color-coded. An orange tag is just the number on the tag. A red tag is a hundred added to the number on the tag. A yellow number is two hundred added to the number. A blue tag is three hundred added. White is four hundred. Black is five hundred. Purple is six hundred. Green is seven hundred. Pink is eight hundred brown is 900. For example, I saw this condor in Big Sur. As you can see, it has a blue tag with 11 on it, so that means the individual's full number is 311. On Ventana's site, I can find more information about number 311. Her name is Loner, and she was released into the wild in 2004, and has one living offspring. Each year, every condor is recaptured by being baited at feeding sites with carry-on like stillborn cattle. They are given a checkup and a new transmitter. This is to ensure the bird isn't undergoing any health issues and to keep the transmitter singling. If the bird was seen landing on power lines, it undergoes training in a simulated environment, being given small shocks for landing on poles. Some individuals may have to undergo this training multiple times. The bird's diet is often supplemented at feeding sites with stillborn cattle. Some of you may be asking, can I be eaten by a condor when I eventually pass away and become one with nature? The firm answer is, uh, no. The majority of people who drag the calves up to the feeding sites on the tops of mountains would prefer not to add a deceased human to the load. Besides sky burials being illegal, you probably aren't the healthiest meal for a condor. This concludes the video. If you liked the video, I desperately entreat you to press the thumbs up and subscribe to Raptor Feather Vids. Anyways, have a wonderful day.